In December 2023, it will mark 76 years since the first flight of the legendary MiG-15, a Soviet design that changed the history of aviation forever. However, time takes its toll on all machines, even the best ones, and today, this McQuayan aircraft is a relic of the past, closer to museums than to the runways. Nevertheless, there is one nation that continues to operate these relics to this day, the People's Air Force of North Korea. In this new video from Military Aviation, we want to invite you to discover some of the endless secrets of the nation led by Kim Jong-un, a world unto itself, where nuclear development is combined with completely obsolete aircraft that can barely take off. Join us to find out how the last MiG-15s in service around the world operate and how useful they are. The Air Force of the People's Army of North Korea has more than 110,000 troops operating between 1,200 and 1,500 aircraft. In principle, these numbers should be enough to command respect in the West, but quantity doesn't necessarily imply quality. Among the thousand military aircraft, Kim Jong-un's troops include truly old and outdated planes, but none have as much history behind them as the McCoyan Interceptor. The MiG-15 story began just after World War II when the Soviet Union produced one of its first turbojet fighters, the MiG-9. The result was a failure, but it laid the aerodynamic groundwork for the next great aircraft of the socialist power. The first step toward that goal was to have an engine up to the task, and for that, they turned to Rolls-Royce and their extensive experience. From a Nene engine, Moscow engineers produced the Klimov RD-45, which would become the heart of this aircraft. Then, to harness the potential of this new power plant, the Soviet Union requested the development of a new interceptor fighter specifically designed to shoot down enemy bombers. The result was a clever design with a swept wing, capable of exceeding 1,000 km per hour and with structural reinforcements to carry underwing loads. McCoyan's fighter was ready to write its glorious military history. In terms of dimensions, the MiG-15 is 10.1 meters long and has a wingspan of 10.08 meters, with space for just one pilot. Today, these might seem like modest figures, but at the time, it was an impressive aircraft, with an empty weight of 3,580 kilograms and a maximum takeoff weight of 6,100 kilograms. This mass is propelled by a power plant consisting of one of those Klimov engines we mentioned earlier, capable of generating 26.5 kN of thrust. Not bad for an antique. Despite being a machine with more than 75 years of history, it has an impressive maximum speed of over 1,075 km per hour, with a cruising speed of 840. Using external fuel tanks, the MiG-15 has a range of 1,975 km, which is currently considered too low considering the distances that modern aircraft need to cover. The only offensive context where the MiG-15 might be useful to North Korea is in the event of an attack on its neighbor to the south. In all other scenarios, the range of the McCoyan model would prove insufficient, especially when it's not equipped to fire long-range missiles to make up for this deficiency. Speaking of armament, it's a good opportunity to review what the MiG-15 can offer in terms of firepower. First, it has three cannons, two of which are Nuttleman Richter NR-2323 mm cannons on the left side of the fuselage, each loaded with 80 rounds. The third cannon is a Nuttleman N3737 mm cannon, located on the right side of the fuselage with only 40 rounds. Its two hardpoints are prepared to carry a combination of bombs or rockets, although they are mostly old and obsolete units. The production of the model took off completely in December 1948, with them fully incorporated into air regiments in 1949. Over a span of 10 years, the socialist power produced around 13,100 units, to which another 4,500 aircraft were added from Chinese, Czechoslovak, and Polish factories, which obtained the design as part of a licensing agreement due to their good relations with the Soviet Union. Each country had its own variants, with minimal modifications to adapt to their specific strategic requirements. The golden age of the MiG-15 was during the Korean War, 
which took place between 1950 and 1953. In that conflict, the MiG-15s piloted by Soviet troops demonstrated overwhelming superiority over almost all other enemy fighters, including the powerful US F-86 Sabre. Keep in mind that, in just one month, Soviet units claimed the destruction of 29 aircraft, 11 P-80s, 7 B-29s, and 9 P-51s. While the United States claims that a large part of these losses were accidental, it is undeniable that the MiG was giving Uncle Sam's aircraft a beating. Such was the impact of the MiG-15 that it put an end to the aerial dominance of the B-29 bombers, many of which were shot down by Moscow's fighters, although the actual numbers of these engagements are still a matter of debate among historians and representatives of both sides. The MiG-15 achieved incredible penetration in Asia and was also piloted by Chinese men, who achieved fewer aerial victories due to their inferior training. As part of the Soviet strategy to build political ties, the interceptor was sold to numerous allied nations, so it participated in conflicts around the world. The Mikoyan entered service in 37 air forces, but eventually almost all of them abandoned this venerable model in favor of more modern and capable units. After all, 70 years of service tend to render military aircraft completely obsolete. So, what does North Korea really use it for? Many sources claim that the role of the MiG-15s in the People's Army Air Force of North Korea is mainly for training purposes, although this version has raised suspicions among the more skeptical. It is known that the Asian country has 45 units of the legendary Soviet aircraft, and many suspect that they are actually part of the operational arsenal. In any case, in emergency situations, Kim Jong-un's troops may end up aboard these relics, even if their systems have become too outdated to compete with modern aircraft. Can you imagine a duel between one of these McCoyans and an F-16 fighting Falcon Block 52 with state-of-the-art avionics and heat-seeking missiles? It would be an immensely unequal battle between the past and the present, but certainly an interesting one to watch. This theory has further worsened North Korea's already poor military image, whose fleet has been described as an authentic museum of old Cold War designs, and even earlier periods. Among the more modern and powerful aircraft is the MiG-29, an air superiority fighter designed in the late 1970s. This fourth-generation model continues to be a more than acceptable and powerful platform, but not all North Korean aircraft are as fortunate. The most numerous fighter in their fleet is the Chengdu J-7. Basically a Chinese version of the early 1960s MiG-21. It is followed by the Shenyang J-5, the Chinese variant of the MiG-17, which had its first flight in 1956 and was retired from service over 30 years ago. If we compare the state of their air force with, for example, the more modern units used by Japan and South Korea, the technological difference is evident. On one side, there are American F-35s and domestically produced fifth-generation fighters, while on the other, there are Soviet models whose spare parts have not been manufactured for decades. However, if the war in Ukraine has made anything clear, it's that, in extreme situations, even World War II-era weaponry is a viable tool for victory. This brings us to the end of this video. If you want to continue learning about developments in the world of military aviation, we invite you to subscribe and enable notifications. For now, we bid farewell until the next installment.